All right, so we're back with the only game that likes breaking the rules of physics like it's no big deal. It's Universe Sandbox 2. This is Saturn. Saturn is cool because it has rings. So today I figure uh, I'm going to try and break my computer because I'm a, a sadist and by proxy my computer is a masochist. I find it interesting that when the game completely overloads Saturn's rings, it looks more like Saturn than like the average Saturn. Rings are amazing and I wanna mess with them. I think that the very first thing that I'd like to do to the rings is throw something through them, of course, at the speed of light. People I've mentioned, they said, great, it's impossible to go faster than the speed of light. It probably is, but that's why we have video games. You gotta remember that Universe Sandbox 2 does whatever the hell it wants, it really doesn't care. Universe Sandbox 2 is the game that steps up to the pedestrian crosswalk when the little red light is on and it walks across anyway. I'm gonna launch a planet. I think I'm gonna pick Mercury today because we picked on Pluto a lot last time. Launch velocity. Fast. Someone else had mentioned like tunneling. When stuff moves so fast that there's a there's a like the potential that the object will just pass through another object without actually damaging it. That's kind of cool. All right, Mercury, I know I don't have the best aim in the universe, but I swear to God, if you let me down, you're out of the freaking family. In the beginning here, I just want to see if I can force Mercury to pass through the rings and see if it does anything unusual. Okay, that's a pretty good aimed up Mercury ring thing. Yeah, Mercury is just phasing through the rings. Like it doesn't really care. It's just kind of like perfectly manipulating itself through the rings. I don't believe this for a second. Hold on, let me slow Mercury down a little bit. Okay, yeah, see this is a much, much slower Mercury. This Mercury kind of like got held back in school and stuff. And you can clearly see now that as the particulates hit the surface, it is lighting this. It's like the 4th of July down here on the surface of Mercury. It's fantastic. Now, Mercury has like a perfect semicircle. I just noticed, did the other Mercury absorb the particles? Look at... <laughs> Look at the little pathway over here. It looks like a pathway leading up to someone's front door. I think that's where our other Mercury went through and told all of the ring particles to go to hell. Did I shoot this Mercury into Saturn? I hope I didn't shoot it directly into Saturn, but it looks like it's going into Saturn. Oh, it's probably because of the, uh, the gravitational pull. Well, that's unfortunate. Got a little bit of a Nike swoosh going through here. Not sponsored. I had no intent on doing this when I originally wanted to throw a planet. So Saturn is slightly sad due to getting hit by a planet, but not as sad as it's about to be because now I want to see what happens when I throw a black hole, a really tiny black hole, at the speed of light past the rings. A black hole moving at the speed of friggin' light. What does it all mean? See, it's a sad black hole. This is like the little brother of the normal black holes. All right, one times the speed of light, tiny little black hole, go. All right, right over here is our light speed moving black hole. Also, I'd like to take this opportunity to mention that uh, this is the, oh, this is the first time I'm not killing anyone, see? You guys are always saying I'm murdering the entire universe. But right now, I'm just kind of destroying Saturn. And nothing's on Saturn anyway. Y'all ever seen Spaceballs with the big ass vacuum cleaner? That's like what's happening here. Well, everyone, we did it. We turned Saturn into a sperm. I guess it could also be like a water droplet if you look at it this way. What happens if I fire another black hole? Say, right about here. What the hell? Oh, sweet baby Jesus, that's amazing. The rings just went wild and shot Saturn and all the chunklets all over the place. All the other black holes pulling back now. It's like sucking all of the ring and shooting it out the other side. It's creating like a, what the hell? Is it like reforming the rings? Saturn is super unhappy right now, but this looks amazing. I don't really know what to say. You can see the black hole over there, kind of just making the rings do this giant uh, orbit. But like half of the rings are on this side where it got pulled from the first black hole and the other chunks of the rings are over on this side. Okay, this looks like some space age freaking street art up in here. Saturn is also super unhappy right now. I mean, Saturn's always unhappy. I don't think it ever has like a good day per se, but right now it's like extra annoyed as all of its rings do like a friggin' rainbow over the black hole that's moving light speed. That's a friggin' sweet arc. Where's the where's the rest of the rings? It's they've they've kind of spread all over the place right now. Oh, oh, oh what the hell? Oh sweet Jesus. Okay, I think Finally, the rings may 
beat, I think Saturn just got completely obliterated. Yeah, there's nothing left of Saturn. It's just, it's just particles now. It's just additional pieces of ring. As we back up, we get to see what it's like when Saturn gets flushed down the toilet. All of its ring fragments creating one hell of a, one hell of a show, man. I always knew I should have been playing with rings this whole time. It's like hula hoop, but better. What the guy from uh, Men in Black always say, we're not, we're not hosting an intergalactic kegger here. This is, this right here is the intergalactic kegger. And this is why you should be hosting it at least once a year. There is so much going on on the screen right now. My computer hates this. I can feel its anguish right now as it moves at like 18 frames a second. If you're wondering what it looks like from the surface of the black hole, uh, it looks kind of like this. From here, it doesn't look that wild, but as you go further and further in, you can see just how far the black hole has moved the rings from their original point of origin. Well, we made a space tornado. Pretty happy. All right, so that was pretty good. Now what, uh, you know, if, if if it hates this many particles in the first place, what happens if we put one awful Saturn like this next to another awful Saturn like this? All right, here we go. Double Saturn. I'm sorry, computer, but we had to do it, man. All right, things are going to start moving here in just a second. Now, obviously, gravity is going to be kicking in here in just a little minute, but I've also got it positioned where the rings are like just touching it, like just the tip. You know what I mean? Like they're just barely involved with one another. Oh yeah, you can see, like I'm just, it's like Saturn one and Saturn two, you know, it's like brother and sister Saturn, but Saturn one's rings are already starting to just annihilate the surface of Saturn two. The same thing should be happening over here. I'm actually kind of surprised that the rings aren't colliding with each other more, which is kind of unusual. Let's go ahead and speed, if this thing can handle me speeding this up. Mmm. That's the stuff right there. Two Saturns making sweet love in such a way that shouldn't be possible into something that's even better than I had previously anticipated. Again, if I was going to have like a picture on my wall of something space oriented, this would probably be it because it's pretty damn awesome. See, we always said that we could make Saturn better and stronger. See, two Saturns went in, and only one Saturn is left standing. But this Saturn is the, it's the more powerful Saturn. See, it's better than the original Saturn. I wonder if the rings will, like, reconstitute themselves around this Saturn over here. They're starting to do it. Like, it's, it's crazy, but they're starting to get sucked up and surround the Saturn like it used to be. You know, I would say Saturn is mostly the same. I mean, other than the fact that it's turned into a glowing, fiery ball of satanic death. 300,000 degrees Celsius, no big deal. Come on, Saturn, you're missing some of your rings. Get all the rings up in there, nice and smooth. Some of the rings are getting away. This calls for a black hole. My answer to everything is more black holes. It's like more cowbell, but slightly more destructive, I guess. All right, Saturn, I'm sorry. Have fun. Okay, so it should pass by right like so. Anything happen? Is it pissing? I was gonna say, is it pissing the Saturn rings off? The answer is yes. It just took a long, long time because of how fast it's moving. It is shooting the Saturn ring particles all across the universe. So... What if I launch a much, 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 much bigger black hole? Like a much bigger black hole. Raced the entire simulation. I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of curious what happens when we give other stuff rings. Here's the sun. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I think if you give the sun Saturn rings, yeah, see how it immediately gets destroyed? So like, it doesn't even count. So, um, how about a spiral flat? What does that do? Oh, that looks pretty cool. Okay. What exactly is it? It seems to be getting closer and closer to the sun. I imagine given enough time, it's going to eventually run into the sun. Okay, I was totally wrong. It is going to create the trippiest freaking mesmerizing pattern of weirdness I've ever seen. What if you add more and more and more and a lot more, 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 huh? I gave the sun rings. Well, that's pretty cool. This would probably be a really bad time to do a moon swarm but uh, we're gonna do it. All right, so there's the sun with its kick-ass rings. Boom, moon swarm. And this is where all hell begins to break loose as the moons just freaking run straight into all of the pieces. Oh, that's awesome. Oh yeah, yeah, I, I love the sun and everything like that, but uh, quite frankly, 
I love seeing random crap like this a little bit more. Oh, the sun's getting a lot bigger. The sun is really starting to get pissed off. The sun is changing color. Oh, the sun just went supernova. Like, I'm pretty sure it's 100% supernova right now. Yep, sun went supernova. Whenever the sun goes supernova, you always have to put an earth in there. Welcome everyone to earth. Temperature, five degrees Celsius. Like, it's no big deal. When I unpause this, I'm imagining that the Earth is going to get completely ob obliterated pretty quickly. Ah, mmm. There goes the temperature. Hold on, let me go ahead and throw a uh, little flashlight on the Earth so that we can see it a little bit better. You can do, like, velocity and all kinds of colors, too, but I'm just going to leave this like it is. Yeah, 3 degrees Celsius. That sucks. Not much we can do about it, though. Gray was busy throwing moons over here at, at a ring-infused sun. So this is pretty much... The result of me getting to play with the universe as I often do. I'm kind of surprised that the Earth still looks pretty good considering it's 5,000 degrees Celsius. How hot does this get? You guys know a lot in the comments section. Is there a point where heat cannot heat anymore? If, if that makes any sense. Like a point where, where measurement no longer is valuable for heat. Like it just, it's, it heat can't get that hot because we're at almost 10,000 degrees Celsius and that seems like a lot. There we go. Man, it took a long time for the earth to be evaporated. What happens if you throw a black hole through a supernova? Hold on, supernova. Don't go too big now. Again, just, just a, just a little black hole. Not a big, not a big black hole. Just an average, really tiny black hole. I don't know. Doesn't look like he's doing too much. How about a big ass black hole? Oh. Well, I'm starting to glitch stuff out, okay? But other than that, it's the supernova is still noving. This weird crap is like double supernovaing. I don't know, black hole V nova. Which one wins? So this is two galaxies like dancing together, but we need to do something else here. So I'm gonna throw a black hole in. Put it right about there. Here we go. So how does that how does that feel? How does it feel? having a black hole somewhat near the two galaxies. Well, it's not really somewhat near. It's actually pretty far because we're dealing with galaxies here. So they're pretty damn big. How about if I put it like over here? How about that? Did that piss anyone off? You guys care about that? No, you're just gonna do the whole conglomeratory awesome thing. Kind of looks like the galaxies are hanging out in the smoking section. Like there's a lot of black smoke, goo, particles, space dust, whatever you want to call it. Kind of flying off over here. I don't know. How about the old black hole at the speed of light? Anything? Nothing. Okay, we're gonna go crazy with the rings now, okay? This is gonna, this should be wild. So this is a sun with a ring of 120 Earths in the perfect orbit for climate. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the sun and we're gonna increase the mass by 10. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, the explosion just vaporized all the Earths instantaneously. Okay, let me, uh, maybe let's, let's mess with the mass a little bit slower. I went through all the trouble saying that, like, I wasn't going to end any lives, and then I just killed 120 Earths. Okay, so, here, just, just, just a little bit now. Here, how about, how about times two? There we go. Oh, okay, all the Earths are starting to get pulled in, in like a giant swirling death spiral, and that looks freaking awesome we'll increase it just a little bit more we'll go we'll go four suns how about that that should bring all the earths back in again the orbit is turning into like this awesome cross thatch work of insanity all the earths are coming in and they should all be like co-joining in just a second here well some of them did some of them obliterated each other a couple of them just went flying off okay 16 times the normal sun right now. How many Earths are left, I wonder? I don't know how many, how many have, have survived the culling at this point. Earths are getting shot out into the universe here as they all slowly begin to, like, it, it's basically like an Earth shake, effectively. Like a milkshake, I guess like a Milky Way shake. All right, I'm gonna do three this time. So three, three suns mass. And I want to see, I'd like them to like all hit together at exactly the same time. Now it's still not enough to bring them precisely to the middle. All right. So we're at four times now. Everything's kind of roping inside, getting real close. All right. How about six times? This looks promising. Oh, it looks damn promising. Oh, I'm going to see what happens over time here. I just kind of want to see if, if, I, ah, damn it. They keep, they keep like slingshotting all over the place. Okay, here we go. I managed to get it 16 without going supernova. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Well, that worked pretty good. 
few of the Earths kind of remained in the in the uh, the rings here, but the rest of the Earths went flying out. All right, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna bring the Earths in real slowly. It's taking a long time, but they're getting pulled in. They're getting pulled in. I just need to hope that the Earths don't all disintegrate on me. A lot of the Earths, it looks like, are just turning into into dust flying out into the universe. This is the, uh, basically like the sphincter of the universe clenching up. Yeah, all the Earths are just starting to smash into one another as they get closer and closer to the sun. Unfortunately, the sun has now turned into a black hole and everything that is left of the ring of originally climate stable Earths uh, is now just turned into a firestorm of flaming bits. Well, I hope I've shown everyone why rings are cool. And basically every planet needs rings because it just looks awesome with them. Anyway, folks, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Universe Sandbox 2. Until the next time, stay foxy and much love.